stop all these siege tanks now, those drones really desperately trying to run for their lives. Uh, I'll definitely be keeping an eye out for Forbes here to see, um, one, where the spawns are, and two, uh, if he decides to open air or uh, decides to open somewhat of a, a gateway opening. But again, this is uh, Wednesday Night StarCraft. We have VVV taking on uh, Binary Gaming, formerly known as OGD. VVV Gaming is up 3-1 uh, with Titan. Uh, could uh, actually pull an all-kill here and end the game, but we're just going to have to see. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to wait and see what's going to happen here as it is going to be close air spawns, as you mentioned. Forbes spawning as the purple Protoss player at the 6 o'clock position. Meanwhile, we have Titan spawning as the red Zerg at the 9 o'clock position. Zerg versus Protoss. We're going to see Titan fly this Overlord across this little ravine here in just a moment. And then, the you know, both players will know exactly what to expect. And I'm curious as to whether or not Titan will be able to get into a truly macro style of game. It looks like Titan has been very cold in a calculating player, not engaging unless unless he really thought that he had a good, good shot. He, he's not just trying to trade units. Every engagement, every attack really had a purpose so far. And I think it's working out very well for him as Forbes sets up a front door pylon. Most likely he will have a gateway and, this, and a cybernetics core thrown down as well. Add that zealot in there as a probe now makes its way around the scout. Yeah, uh, definitely not going to try the Forge Fast Expand on here because, you know, there's real, relatively no choke to hold off. So, uh, but Titan, um, like I said, they do, uh, or like I was talking about, there are close air positions now. So um, any air base play can be uh, pretty, pretty um, harsh on this map for Titan to deal with as, you know, the distances between the bases are so close by air and also the uh, third if titan decides to get it early um can be hard to hold off but again we're just gonna have to wait and see here there is no gas yet for forbes okay there he goes he's getting a 15 gas so uh kind of a waiter gas for for a protest you know about a supplier so waiter but uh this pro gonna be here being annoying titan opening up the standard as he has the last uh well <laughs> the last game anyway i forgot he opened the temple that one game, but he is getting his pool, his gas first, followed by his pool. So Titan really favors this, uh, um, getting wings out before his expansion. Really just wants to play safe, make sure there's no, you know, sort of proxies or anything that could, you know, kind of hurt him early game. We do have the cybernetics core being thrown down. So uh, also a pretty standard opening from Protoss. Yeah, Forbes also now getting that second assimilator at about the same time he got that cybernetics core. So we may see a Stargate. Titan now flying back over. He does see the second assimilator. And normally at this stage, it, it, it would indicate, or as a Zerg player in his shoes, I would say train up additional Queens. Um, queens, the defensive unit, good against the Phoenixes, good against the Void Rays. And as long as you have one to two Spore Crawlers and then um, you know a, a Queen at a Hatchery, you should be able to minimize the amount of damage unless your opponent over invests into the attack. But there is also a lot of energy, interestingly enough, saved up on the Nexus. We'll see if he continues to Chrono Boost out probes, or if perhaps he's going to try to Chrono Boost out the Cybernetics Core and get that Warp Gate tech even faster. Yeah, again, not trying to get a uh, fast expansion here. He did get a second gas at 18 food, so um, a, a quicker, I would say, second gas. Uh, I'm sure I'll be PM'd by a bunch of Protoss players if I'm wrong. Uh, which, you know, wouldn't be the first time, but, um, we do have another gateway going down and Titan's expansion is started. So I feel like that, um, Forbes either really wants to play safe. I think he's just going to bank on getting a lot of centuries before he decides to move down his ramp here. Titan, as you can see with the Zergling, he's being very, very diligent in scouting for probes or pylons or anything of the sort to mess him up, which is very smart. Uh, you know, uh, players need to be very, uh, attentive with their early game scouting especially against you know a protoss who can lay down pylons uh because it's going to be very annoying come later in the game but titan actually does have a lot of links here i don't think i don't know what he plans to accomplish i think he might have thought that the protoss should have expanded by now and he actually is going to deny this and actually might set back this could be a mistake if uh forbes decides to come down the ramp which he is very he's being very smart he's sending his uh Zealot first, and he's not sending his uh, pro or his uh, sentries to follow, which is what he needs to do. Because if those get caught in the open, it's going to be uh, very hard to recover. But now here come all these Zerglings coming in here, and one force field goes off. And actually, he's going to lose, maybe lose one of these, and he's not casting any more force fields. And actually, lets 
Titan kind of get in his base. Titan's going to get a free scout in here. Uh, doesn't really see anything, but actually losing a lot of blinks at the front. Not really paying attention. Oh, and actually a very bad force field blocks his sentries in, and Titan is going to force a cancel on that expansion. Yeah, so nicely done there, forcing the cancel. And now the Zerglings are just holding position. Not quite sure what they're doing there. It looks like they're finally running away. But I was really concerned about Titan. Titan had invested a lot of larva, a lot of minerals into those Zerglings. And it didn't look like he was going to be able to do a lot of damage with them. But he was able to force the Nexus to cancel. It is going to hurt Forbes in the long run as he already has his hatchery up. He has a queen over there ready to take care of it. And I believe around this time, Titan may attempt to um, throw down another hatchery at the high mineral ground location at the 10 o'clock. And then um, perhaps just be able to macro off of three bases and, and perhaps start punishing his opponent by just because he delayed and canceled the Nexus. Yeah, again, um, I'm sure uh, Forbes was kicking himself in the butt when he made that force field. Um, can't really blame him. The uh, Zerglings, that his original force field was about ready to run out and the Zerglings were knocking at the door, but I think just kind of a panic force field uh, just blocked all, his, uh, blocked all of his sentries in and was able to let Titan cancel that Nexus. So again, like you were saying, his second base is going to be delayed here. Uh, no other tech besides these gateways, so uh, uh, I keep forgetting his name. Forbes is uh, not going to show his hand here, whether he's going to go into, you know, say Blink Stalker kind of play, or if he's going to go into the Stargate kind of play, or if he's actually going to go into Robo uh, tech here. But Titan, again, being very diligent, actually does not take his third base. I would have thought he would have taken his third base right now, but does get a second evolution chamber. Bailing Nest is done. Uh, so I'm actually very interested to see what Titan is doing. He does only have one. Uh, Actually, now just taking off his drone on his third gas, so only mining from two geysers right now. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm rather curious as to what Titan's going for. He is behind in food, not by much. A8 food. He also has a lot of spine crawlers here. So with, with four spine crawlers on the front door, um, he, he expects a very large attack to be coming in, and it does look like it will be coming in. That, that is a fair amount of sentries. Um, what is that? Eight sentries as a proxy pylons trying to be set up, but nothing like creep to help prevent that from uh, from being able to warp in. And now there is the force field on the low ground. A queen is already ready. Bane things are running around in the back as well. And it looks like a couple of spine crawlers over here on the high ramp would have been very effective. And, and we'll see what's going to go down. I think Forbes has the larger overall resource army, but not going to be able to do very much about it. No, absolutely not. With these four spine crawlers here and these banelings, um, with an army that's mainly sentry and, and uh, zealot, uh, very key force fields would have been made. And actually, he lost two um, zealots for free, pretty much. Let the spine crawlers take care of that. Focused on the evolution chamber a little bit, but I agree with Forbes' decision to back off. Yeah, he does. He does have the bigger army, but the static defense and positioning by Titan spine crawlers and his army as well, as long as his, as well as his Evo chamber, uh, would make pretty much any attack not really that beneficial for him. So he is going to pull back here. And we have a Twilight Council and two more gateways on the way. So this will make, if I'm counting correctly, uh, this will make six gateways total here. He does have uh, no upgrades started. His forge is still sitting there idle, and he is. Uh, uh, Corona boosting out Blink right now. Pro production uh, is still going on. And Titan actually is getting his third base right now. He does have plus one melee on the way. He does have a Roach Warden almost finished, along with a third Evo Chamber, if I'm reading this right. So may might be trying to go for all upgrades at once here. Uh, armor as well as melee and range attack. Yeah, so that, that's going to be very interesting. You can see Evolution Chamber, Evolution Chamber. I'm looking for, yeah, there is three currently in play. And you can also see that we're going to see some Baneling Carpet Bombing. There's one on the back side of the base right now, hanging out over here at the, what I'll call the 8 o'clock position. Some on the front door as well. And with such a large sentry army, those Banelings are going to have a very, very good time just destroying a bunch of those very expensive sentries and zealots. It looks as though the timing on this is going to be have to be absolutely perfect. The Overlord now positioning themselves. Front door also testing the waters as well. Zergings are now trying to come in. Force fields do come into play. Baneling carpet bombing on both sides. The main base and the natural expansion. And there goes the Banelings. There goes one. There goes two. And, the, and a lot of workers were destroyed. 21 workers killed as the Overlords now back off. Very nice uh, by Titan that... Um Overlord did go into the main and did drop all four banelings. Um, he didn't really micro them at all, so they, they didn't get the as many kills as he would have hoped, but he definitely got a lot, so definitely not bad. And he did leave with all of his overlords, or most of them, intact, so he still has that supply. 
And so Titan, and now we actually have DTs on the way, and now they are doing a big whoop around to the third base, so it will be interesting to see if Titan's going to be able to hold that off. He does have a wear up, so he is going to be able to get an overseer out. Uh, but yeah, now Titan still up in 10 workers. I don't think that attack is, is completely as much damage as Titan would have liked it to. Um, as you can see, a lot of the sentries are still alive, unfortunately, for Titan. Uh, but Forbes, obviously happy about that. The Forbes is still... Oh, actually, plus one, plus one was uh, research while I was looking. So he does have one one here. Titan, uh, not making use of all of his Evo Chambers, only has one upgrade right now, and that is armor. And now these two DTs have made it. They killed a few drones and are now leaving. We look... Uh, three drones total killed, so... Uh, definitely not cost efficient uh, for him, but it looks like uh, he is going to be uh, Forbes is going to secure his third base here. Yeah, so it looks like yes, we'll we'll secure the third base. A pylon already coming in. Then just the probe has to wait for all of that creep to slowly, slowly recede. And as soon as that does recede, a nexus most likely will be coming in over there. You can see overlords. Uh, what five overlords? Three of them are currently holding banelings. I, I would personally like to see the banelings. Sp was split a little bit more between those overlords being able to um, make sure that they all unload before the the overlord perhaps pops roaches and zerglings are now once again on the move trying to find those dark templars uh, there is also an hallucinated phoenix out now um gonna be revealed as an hallucination in just a moment as also a hatchery gonna come in so uh, a, a battle may be ensuing and i can't tell if there's actually dark templars in the main base or if that's creep from Titan, always annoying when a Protoss player uses purple against a Zerg. <laughs> yeah, it really is hard to see on, on the uh, mini-map whether or not uh, it's creep or weapons or, uh, or units moving across. But Titan, like you said, does have these overlords here full of Banelings along with a Roach and a Wing Army here. It looks like they're going to swing around. It looks like there's going to be attack at the third and Titan not bringing his overlords with this Banelings field. I don't know if he's going to try to drop in the main or what he's going to do here. But... Uh, Bangling speed has not started, so they still are slow wings, and Titan knocking on the door. He is actually beelining right for the main with these overlords, but a nice blink up. He might actually lose one. Oh, and he might actually lose another uh, overlord. Oh, and a nice bangling drop there. Does kill it. Oh, and this last overlord. Oh, and the uh, uh, probes are stuck in a very nice bangling drop. Wow, if you look at the workers count, exactly half the worker supply. For Protoss now, 34 to 68. So, wow, I think those bangling drops went a lot better than I expected them to. I thought uh, that the Blink Stalkers would have came up and got the probes, but he pulled the probes towards the entrance, which was a very odd choice because the banglings were right there. And then he trapped his own probes down at its natural by blocking them in between the mineral patches and his own units. So, a very successful, but the third was not broken, but Titan didn't lose his units, and now we have a massive counterattack coming in from Forbes. Yeah, right now the Stalkers are going to try to push in over here. There is an Archon in the group as well. Stalkers are blinking in, drones are being transferred. Fungal growth has been placed down across a couple of units. It looks like another Fungal growth may be able to come in as well, but Infestors are getting destroyed. He's not able to save them nearly as much, but the Roaches are doing a nice push back, and all of those Stalkers have been destroyed. And there is the GG by Forbes. Titan coming in with the reverse all kill after VV Ruff loses game one.